ask you. Have, you, fact, have I mean... you ever been in a woman's prison? No, I haven't, no. Because all this stuff about like this beautiful solidarity where we share our experience and, you know, a man coming into that and everybody's going to go, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, I'm my under no illusion solidarity. that prison's a nice place, but well, no, but, I mean, you're just, you find you're just, your survival you're, tactics no, where you you're, can. You're kind of, you're kind of conjuring this scene, which is not, well, it's just bollocks, to be fair. Hello and welcome to the first episode of Talk TV's brand new female only show. Each week we'll be bringing you frank and honest debate around some of the most pressing issues, all from a female perspective. On the show today, are feminists fighting back? We're discussing whether prioritising trans inclusion is detrimental to women's rights. We'll be filling in the blanks of some of this week's trending news headlines. And later, your questions will be answered. Joining me today are three fierce females. Agony aunt and advice editor at The Sun, Sally Ladd. Columnist at The Guardian, Zoe Williams. And journalist and author of What Women Want, Ella Wheat. But now, buckle up, because this is Women Unfiltered. Now, this is an issue that's becoming increasingly divisive. Is prioritising trans inclusion detrimental to women's rights? We've seen the NHS and charities such as Cancer Research UK and Joe Cervical Cancer Trust making a push to use more gender neutral terms like everyone with a cervix, people who menstruate, menstruators, non-men rather than women. Sally. What's your thoughts on gender neutral language? Well, if we go back to the original question, which is, is prioritising trans rights negatively affecting women? Mm. Well, yes, if you're prioritising it, in my opinion, yes, it is going to negatively affect women's rights because you can't prioritise one or the other. You have to look at both of them in tandem. We live at a time of um, the Me Too, movement, we have rising violent porn, rising violence against women. There's such a preoccupation with worrying about trans activists. I think people are rushing into making quick and rash decisions and you see that in the language that is on the NHS website and on some car cancer charity websites. I understand why they've done it. They want to include non-binary people, they want to include trans men, but why not say that? Women and non-binary and trans men. <laughs> you can't just erase women. It's, it's inaccurate. And especially in healthcare, it needs to be accurate. OK. So, Zoe, do you think there's, there's a way that everyone can be included in some of the language and women not sort of erased? I mean, I really... I think we're looking at this from the wrong angle, to be honest. The, Women and, trans, women and trans people do not have to see their rights as in op opposition. Feminists don't all think one thing. I definitely don't agree with, you know, so much of the anti-trans language is about this idea of a feminist, you know, uniting a whole spectrum of opinion, you know, a single opinion in which trans people are here and women are here. No feminists I know think like that. And never in my lifetime has feminism ever been united on anything, actually. <laughs> I mean, we think this is bad. You should, you should have seen it in the 80s when there was the kind of all men are rapists debate. There, were genuine, there was genuinely no prospect for feminists to ever agree. And we never did agree, um, but we just moved on and did, and did other stuff. Specifically on the language, you've got to bear in mind, I, don't, I mean, I don't think, again, no woman I've ever met would mind being called a woman or a person with a womb. It's like, who, who cares? It's not a deal breaker. It's not a big deal. Ellie, you've written a lot about feminism. Do you think feminism is divisive now, more so than ever, particularly over gender neutral language? Well, you know, fem feminism as a label of feminist isn't particularly relevant to most women. We know there's countless surveys that show that, um, you know, huge percentages of people are up for gender equality. They think men and women should be equal yeah. and all the rest of it, but they don't attach themselves to the F word. So discussions about feminism uh, and how relevant it is, is is actually irrelevant. Most people aren't interested. People don't vote for the Women's Equality Party, blah, blah, blah. It's not a thing that a lot of women are interested in. However, I think probably, I mean, I'm a bit shocked at the gaslighting going on, which is that to suggest that uh, women shouldn't be that bothered, bothered if they're defined by their bodily functions. I mean, that is what that is sexism of old, that women were defined by the fact that they had periods and had to be locked away, the fact that they had babies and so were you know, pushed into a certain pigeonhole of um, engaging in life. 
And this is the kind of language that's being reheated in a contemporary format. If I, someone called me a, a menstruator, I'd slap them in the gob because that is not and how... And not, not all women menstruate that, either. Because, well, well, well never, yeah, but never God, point, I mean, but, if, you'd, if you'd slap somebody in the gob for saying that, I wouldn't want to share a toilet with you. Well, maybe you shouldn't. <laughs> maybe you shouldn't because I actually don't think it's funny. I think that there is, there is a kind of a history of women being kept uh, separate from public life on the basis of us being defined by our bodily functions. And this is what's now being, again, kind of reheated in a sort of uh, progressive format. But I think, you know, to, to come to the question about whether or not trans rights does, um, you know, uh, having a view on trans rights does mean prioritising over women. It depends what you mean by trans, because I think, you know, the f <laughs> most people understand that there are trans women, there are trans men. There's no problem with that. I think we're very, t actually, I'm very proud of the fact that we live in a country where for the most part, um, people are pretty tolerant about that, about how people want to dress, what they want to call themselves, all the rest of it. I think you're doing a real disservice to, to staff in the NHS, by the way, because uh, from my experience talking to them, most of them are as sympathetic as they can be to people with different identities. And unfortunately, not trans people, because most trans people don't want anything to do with this debate, but certain influential trans activists are turning that position of women wanting to define their own terms and their own selves as something hateful and problematic. I mean, literally this morning, Oxfam has released a video set with a, a grimacing, hag, witch-faced woman with a, with a badge said, that says turf on it, pointing at a group of LGBTQI plus people. Um, the demonization, I've never seen such demonization of women you know, in the long history of sexism. It's quite remarkable. Can I come back on a couple of things? Um, firstly, this is, I mean, this comes up so many times and again and again, people say this is about the right of women to choose what women can do. That relies on us all agreeing with each other. If women are allowed to choose what a female space is, I'm allowed to choose just as much as you are. Of course you can. Yeah, and I say trans women are welcome. So, so fine. That's, so, that's, that's your rules. That's, wait, if you want to set up a secondly, club Secondly, okay, there, okay, that's your, you've just that's talked for quite a long time. Um, secondly, you know, Again, you come back to this thing, I'm doing a disservice to the NHS, I'm gaslighting, I'm doing this. You've got to be able to accept that people can disagree and still be, you know, still, you know, not everybody calls themselves a feminist. That doesn't mean feminism is irrelevant. Not everybody in the NHS is good or bad. That doesn't mean that two points of view aren't completely acceptable. Not everybody thinks a woman-only space is this or that. You've sure. got to be able to kind of, you, you know, encompass a wide variety of views within a gender without thinking that that's a kind of threat of erasure because it really, really isn't. And, I, I you think, know... I think really part of this is that we all have to agree to disagree and we have to keep debating and keep talking. I, mean, and I love disagreeing. Keep <laughs> so do I. And it's wonderful to have all your comments. Thank you. Now, to prisons, because there's a lot of debate around whether males who transition to females should be sent to women's only prisons. We've seen cases like that of Isla Bryson, who was found guilty of rape and then sent to an all-female jail. There was also the case of Karen White, who sexually assaulted two women while in custody. Again, after being sent to an all-female jail. Sally, let's bring you in again. <laughs> what do you make of this? Well, you have Isla Bryson, Karen White, who obviously get most of the attention. And I think it skews the public perception of actually what is happening. Mm -hmm. There will be plenty of trans women and trans men who are certainly not a threat to either population. Um, but as both of you have just touched on, the debate is so polarised, we're not actually having a real discussion about keeping trans people safe, women safe in prison and men safe. It's we need to calm down. Everybody on both sides of the debate needs to calm down and actually start coming up with some workable solutions rather than all the mudslinging which goes on. Which is a bit of a smokescreen sometimes as well with the mudslinging. Zoe, I know you've written about this topic, you've written a brilliant article about this. What, what are your, what's your thoughts on, on I that? I mean, but, you know, this is, this is absolutely classic gaslighting, in fact. <laughs> the, the, um, the, the idea of like the, the, there's a huge population of trans women prisoners in the female estate and they pose this terrible threat to women 
in the female estate is, com is completely fanciful. No female prisoners have been attacked by anybody trans since 2019, but between 2017 and 2020, there were these seven assaults by involving a trans prisoner. And everybody's like, well, that means trans prisoners are 35,000 times more likely to commit assault because there aren't very many in the prison estate to begin with. In fact, five of them were Karen White. She only got convicted of two of them. The other three lie on her file because most likely because the defence and the prosecution agreed not to pursue them because her sentence was already going to be life. The same year Karen White committed those assaults was the highest suicide rate in the women's estate on record. So if you want to, if you're serious about women's prisons, if you're serious about women in prison and, how, and what kind of a time they're having, you need to you need to look in you need to look in the round. You can't just fixate on this problem, which is which is by no means the greatest problem anybody faces. But this is this isn't what it's about. I, just, I don't care if you committed tax fraud or if you beheaded someone or if you were a sex offender. If you have a male body, if you ha if you are whatever the, li the lingo is, I'm supposed to use. If you are male, it doesn't matter what you define yourself as, what you identify as, then you, do, you should not be in a women's space or like a woman's prison. Because it isn't about assault, it's about dignity, it's about privacy, it's about the kind of quality of life that the women in that prison are living. I know, I mean, that's God forbid, the rule, hang though. a second, God forbid over the end up behind bars. But I, can imagine, well. but I can imagine <laughs> that if I did, I probably would, you know, in the difficulty that Zoe has outlined that, that um, female and male prisoners face, having their freedom taken away from them, dealing with all of that, having to then also have the solidarity that you might find between women and maybe the lives that you've had, the connections you've had, the experiences you've shared, not impinged upon, but affected by the presence of a male, as somebody who is a male, with all the risks that that might cause that are, that, you know, aside from... Uh, rape or sexual assault, like getting pregnant. I mean, just think about what this actually yeah, entails. But, come on, hang on a second. Let me but finish. You're actually wrong about is the, the rules. I'm not, That's what's so I'm annoying. Not, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not wrong about you the are. rules. They changed in 2019. Well, if you're they, not allowed if in the female estate with a penis. Well, if we're talking about this is the other funny thing. We're talking thing. about facts. Everybody yeah, always. Well, that's boring. Everybody, I'm not. I'm not saying it's boring talking about facts. But then but people say. But you just say, don't want to. What about if we just, you know. What's the big problem they get put in solitary confinement? Or what's the big problem but, 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 they, they never ever see anyone? Changed. Why is it that the discussion, let's ask this question, why is it the discussion always that women have to budge up and make space? But I think there's something a bit inhumane about the way in which we are, you know, diminishing the impact that it might have on female prisoners by having a, the presence of a male body in there. Not because of fear, not because that, per, that person might be the mildest person in the world, but because of what it says about privacy and dignity, and also I think this is the most crucial thing, our understanding that there are differences between men and women, and blowing that, talk about fact, blowing that fact out of the water by just saying, what's the problem here? Throw them all in together. Okay, no, wait, is a bit come ridiculous. on, I mean, can I just, wasn't no, right just in the interest placing, of yeah. like broadcasting accuracy, let's just say since 2019, you haven't been allowed to go into the women's estate if you haven't medically transitioned. So we're having this kind of completely yeah, pointless... I'm talking about people who have medi man. medically transitioning does not make you a woman. Oh, OK, well, the, that, you, that's you, a much, you, much you, bigger conversation. That's a different, that's I, it's not a bigger it's conversation. A, it's, it's actually a smaller conversation, but it's not this conversation. Let's do, let's do a field trip to a female prison together, and then we can come back. Well, I've been to and, loads and, of female well, prisons and male prisons. You're the authority on, on the female prisons. <laughs> let's the authority do a field trip. Yeah, we can discuss yeah. this well, yeah. next time. If you go under the knife, you're a woman, apparently. Right. No, yeah. that's Move, not moving what on, I moving said. On. Come on. We're getting very heated here, and for good reason. There's also a debate around toilets, changing rooms too. Sally, we fought very hard as women for some of these spaces. Do you think now, as Ellie said, we're kind of having to shift aside to make room for other people? Well, you can include women's refuges, right? Crisis yeah. centres when under that umbrella. I mean, the Equalities, Health and um, Human Rights Commission recently clarified the rules on this and said organisations can refuse trans entry if they're worried about privacy being compromised, causing trauma, health and safety issues. So we already have the structure in place for organisations to be able to say, sorry, this actually needs to remain a single sex area in order to protect those people. Yeah. So we, we are slowly starting to evolve and starting to be able to cope with the, the complexes around this issue. Um, and I think certainly if, if women feel 
unsafe, then trans women should not be allowed in. Yeah, and there's also the threat, Zoe, that perhaps you know some individuals might masquerade as trans to gain access to places where women are incredibly vulnerable, like you just said, in women's refuges. What I just think <laughs> you lot are being played, honestly. I mean, the, you know, 20 years ago, what? we never cared about who used what toilet. You've, you've, we've all been in a women's toilet, right? They're in cubicles. What's it to you who's in the next cubicle? Nobody ever cared. Did you ever go on a plane and go, oh, I can't go in there, there's a man going in that one? Well, you don't just go into a toilet to have a piss. You don't just, you well, don't just do you go do? in to... <laughs> I mean, you put your lipstick on at the mirror. Um, you might ask someone for a tampon when you're growing up, when you're in school. I mean, it's a bit disgusting, but we used to eat our lunch in the toilet and talk about boys. Oh you know, you know, it's... It's it was a safe space for, for it's girls. It's a place where, particularly as well, you're a young you person... You need to be safe to eat your lunch you know, now. It's not about being safe. Uh, this is where I'll agree with you. It, okay. I actually yeah, think yeah, the I'm discussion, the you, discussion is not, shouldn't be about safety first and foremost, because that is perpetuating a myth that anyone who decides to change their gender is a threat, and I don't think that's true. The debate around sport and transgender athletes has really raised a lot of concern. We've seen trans women such as Leah Thomas competing against and beating female athletes, but when it comes to trans men, it can be argued that they actually present a much smaller threat to male athletes. Only a week or so ago, British Cycling banned transgender women from riding in the female category of the sport in favour of new open categories for male and trans athletes. Ella, what do you make of this? Look, there are certain things in life that, like it or not, um, are true. And one of them is, for example, my husband's always going to beat me in an arm wrestle. It doesn't matter how much it affects my pride. It doesn't actually matter that I'm double his weight. Um, it, is, it, it is one of those unfortunate uh, biological facts. And in the realm of sporting, the reason why we have separated men and women is because there are these, uh, aside from a few outliers, some very exceptional women and very mediocre men, um, the, for the most part, we understand that men can jump higher, run faster. And so for fairness, for, for women, we created a separate category so that we're not always losing to men. <laughs> that seems to me to be pretty sensible. The reason there are separate categories for men and women is that when women competed openly with men, they were too good. This is actually why women's football was abolished by the Football Association in the 20s, was because women were too good. And if you put them on the same team, men got upset. And that has been the evolution of male and female sports I've peeling got to apart. Say, that's a you, say, you look very sceptical, <laughs> but it's true. I mean, honestly, you go back go to the... Scan. But you look at biology. I absolutely 100% agree that trans people should be treated equally. However, biologically, we are not equal. Nobody's if you saying, have nobody's trans, saying we're exactly the same. But have, actually, if you have trans women, they have so much higher levels of testosterone they are stronger no, they no, are they, faster that's actually not, they are that's always actually not true it, actually not you, tr no no oh, no it's really not because oh actually God. you can't compete in the female there category would be. until you've got testosterone levels below a certain level what which, about you, which i know you both know yeah, when you go through puberty your bones grow a certain way differently okay your, fine. you know your your Look, chest Ella, broadens out that, that you is get taller. i can see you both, fact. I can see you're both really wedded to the idea that all men are going to be better than all women at sport but it's just not true they and might so, not be as know, skillful you, you, in certain sports to the idea however they know are the stronger and seen, they are faster what you've seen and that is a biological fact of us of a of a trans cyclist with really big thighs and you're like, oh, well, all men are always going to... All, all we're trans idiots. women it, it, no, are it, always going to... No, no, we've been hoodwinked. But it we're is. Idiots. No, no, listen, Zoe, not, can I just say one thing? We're argument, not engaging. Right? Yeah. I would just like to say it is a fact. If you took the top female athletes for most sports... Well, no, not most and sports. ...and recorded sports. their times, their achievements, there would still be thousands of male athletes who would be beating them. We're going we're gonna to move on. These are really brilliant debates. I think we could just keep going for hours and hours. Now, this is the part of the show where we take a look at some of the week's headlines circling our debate, and we try to fill in the blanks. So, kicking off with the first one. The problem with trans women are... Zoe, what do you think the blank is? No idea. You'd have to tell me what paper it was in. Well, that's cheating. I mean, one word, one word, <laughs> one word. I, d I honestly don't Sally. know. Sally. Women. Women. Yeah, um, that's probably it. So the answer is the problem with trans women are women.
the way in which these things get discussed in the headlines is different to the way in which people discuss it around yeah, their kitchen it's table. Papers, yeah. um, there's a lot more nuance. There's a lot more sort of um, head scratching, which doesn't allow for a 750-word article. Um, and, and in particular, I think also the way in which this gets talked about on Twitter is very different yeah. to the way in which people talk about it among themselves. And the discussion unfolds on social media as well. Yeah. So let's move on to the next one. GP surgery asks parents if there is trans. The child, surely. <laughs> Well, I remember this one. Right, okay, so you know the answer. <laughs> yeah. I think you're allowed to have the advantage. Babies. Oh. Which, yes. That makes much more that sense than a kid. Part. If yeah. you want to make a headline out of it. Yeah. That's um, old news. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what do you think there with that, that GPs are asking about babies and how they identify? I strongly suspect that somebody's just being like somebody's just amplified to the point of madness a, a situation that they've misunderstood. There isn't anybody anywhere in the country who thinks a baby has already decided or could express its sexuality or its or gender. Or that the parents would or know. Or that the parents would know. <laughs> you don't even know whether they're the hungry. Child, actually, the child, I mean, <laughs> you do know. You don't know you, they're hungry. You, you do know, you do know <laughs> about whether tired. they're a boy or a girl. When they come out oh, and you say, but it wasn't, "Here it was is a trans George or question. Jane," yeah, but, no, but you know that they're not trans because you know that they've come out. No, you don't. And then, you know, babies don't have a personhood. Well, you they're, know what they're 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 uh, young men and what that's what's what kind of social trends are happening there. There is what we are we have sort of specifically in healthcare generally accepted, so wait, Ella, but maybe not babies, but kids. All right. Lastly, male Disney employee dressed as Sparks outrage. Sally, woman, woman. I, I remember this story. What do you think? It was it was it was it's somebody a... who worked in the bibbidi bobbidi boop clinic. Oh, uh, that was thingy. it. Yeah. So the actual headline is, male Disney employee dressed as fairy godmother sparks outrage. Look, do you know what I think is really useful about all these headlines, put them together, is just being able to see how much trans people are being demonised and the issue is being weaponised and the papers are talking about them constantly. And can you imagine how much that would what that would feel like can you just imagine for a second how it would feel when every time you open a newspaper you are this gigantic social problem and your identity is causing a problem for society I, i've got to say I, that for me is not a story man yeah. wears dress <laughs> i just <laughs> yeah, exactly I, it's just not for me the weapon I, they talk about weaponizing if you say if you talk, if you're saying that any discussion of infringe, you know, things like removing the word mother and turning it into pregnant woman, person, or that any discussion about women's spaces and women's rights is an attack on trans people, or is being weaponized as an attack on trans people, and that women no, no, should I'm kind not, of zip it I? I didn't in say case that. a trans before person we, feels before bad. Before we start that's another big debate, let's move on. It. Right, you've been sending us your questions ahead of this week's show. We're going to do our best to answer one of them now. Esther asks, the people who transition later in life definitely have a huge advantage over biological women, and that's unfair. But what about those who trans earlier? Is it the same? Sally, what do you think? I feel quite comfortable about sport because, I mean, I, I, you mentioned you've got a son. My elder son, who's 13, literally walked out of the bedroom one morning and, and you could see he'd he changed, the jaw was getting squarer, voice had gone. He's 13, some of his friends at 12 had hit puberty and obviously had a, already started to get a massive dose of testosterone. So I, how young are we going? I mean, if, if the difference is when puberty kicks in at 12, 13, I don't think it really makes much difference in I mean, terms of an advantage, a, a perceived advantage. The, di the difference is there from birth. I mean, there is a reason why we <laughs> yeah. do... There's a reason why boy babies are so much better at throwing than girl babies. No, I'm talking about in the healthcare setting. There is a reason why we have different tests 
for men and women. There's a reason why there's a big problem at the moment with how women's blood tests get interpreted or the way in which we're screened because our bodies work from, the, from our cells to our toenails to everything else, work differently to men. And, and, you know, in order to be clear about how we look after people and also how we differentiate each other in society on a, you know, for practical reasons... You know, it, it, I'm not a doctor, but I've listened to many. Say that again. <laughs> I've listened to many doctors who I've got a GP friend who just scratches his head when I bring this up and say, says, uh, you know, uh, we are different in all ways biologically, and there's and the important thing is that socially, in 90% of places, t areas and places in the world, that doesn't matter to us. We overcome it, apart from when biology and physicality. It's the central thing, which in things like sport, it is about, it doesn't matter how, how kind of smart you are in sport most of the time, it's about how well your body works. Zoe, what do you... What I do you think, mean? that is, is it just quickest for me to say I disagree with every single thing, like everything, from the toenails to the scratching his head? <laughs> so you don't think men and well, women I are just different think, anyway? Well, I, just, I honestly think that it, this is like, it's become a fixation and it's not because anybody cares about cycling and it's not because anybody cares about athletics it's because there is an absolute quite well funded interest in making trans people sound like a para, a, a genuine peril to society by? i've got no idea do you but know, you know I'd i like do like some of it i'd like Ella, some of the cash Ella, that we're allegedly being Ella, paid if you could to just say pipe this. down for one second there is a really established network running from the us to, through tufton street which is funding a lot about that then go hell for leather with anti-trans agendas. This is well known. Just because you're not getting a piece doesn't mean it's not happening. I think on that and, note, and I have I, to you know, say thank like you so <laughs> much for all of your opinions. They've been so, so interesting. That's all we've got time for today. My heartfelt thanks to Sally, Ella and Zoe. Don't forget to like and subscribe and let us know in the comments what you thought today, whether you agree or disagree with any of us. And we'll see you next time for more Women Unfiltered.